Fao. The time to hesitate is through, 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 19th take or something. I've been working for hours on this advertisement. This is the one. This is the one I'm going to use right now. I just locked myself in a room in the basement of my dorm, lined wall to wall in carpet. I blocked the only light and I rolled around on the ground and buttoned my shirt. I brought my notepad down. I've got nonsense written on here. I'm just going to tell it from the heart, okay? The Jack Lagoon is looking to monetize. It's looking to make some money or like clothes or something. Like just you pay me in clothes or food for uh, advertising. No need to work on getting followers. Uh, people will need to listen to this for people to pay me. The more people that listen to this, the more sweaters I get. But we'll get to that later. What's most important now is Broad Ripple Vintage. Broad Ripple Vintage is uh, my own very personal hangout spot. I'm a little teenage girl in the mall there. Uh, uh, immediately, well, they have their own parking lot for starters. And then immediately you walk in and you're, the doors, it's going, the doors. And some uh, like kooky lady with these big red glasses and short hair says, ah, it's 20% off. Or or a long-haired gentleman in a tie-dye t-shirt says, hey, how you doing? It's 20% off today. And then you're turned loose in this closet of a store that's decorated wall-to-wall in posters, political posters, uh, uh, Jim Morrison posters, only almost all Jim Morrison posters. Uh, there's like like classical art and mirrors everywhere. Rugs. You name it. Uh, but today I'm going to focus on, on, on the clothes that they sell because I, I'm going to be doing these plugs for weeks trying to get them to to, to throw some shit my way, you know? So I got to prove to them my allegiance, right? The clothes? Top notch. If you're tired of looking like everyone else in your, in your, in your you know, blue t-shirts, your flippy skirts, you know, your... your, your I don't know, Massimo, uh, uh, collared, button-up, frat shirt, Broderable Vintage, I'm telling you, they've got all kinds of button-up shirts with varying collar sizes, uh, they've got overalls and jumpsuits, last time I was there I saw a NASA suit, they've got dashikis and flannels and coats, and I don't have not explored the women's section all that much, but interesting stuff, I wouldn't buy it personally if I was a woman because it's so out there it's so cool it's the best of the best of every Goodwill search you've ever had and then you know how the best part of Goodwill is like finding that gym gym finding that gem in the racks and racks of clothes at Broad Ripple Vintage you get those racks and racks of clothes but they're made up of gems and within those gems you have to find more gems They've got army coats and bridal dresses and lingerie, like like kinky, uh, like S and M lingerie and like sunglasses and mesh gloves and and jewelry, boots and uh, they don't have shoes. They have just boots and all kinds of pants and skirts. They'll make you look like you're you're straight out of whatever year they're going for. My I got my money on like. A uh, 19, 1976 Goodwill. So like 76 and earlier. Cool. It's cool stuff. I'd spend my life in the... I, if I could live in the dressing room of Broad Robo Vintage and then just hike out to Yats every day for uh, like lunch and dinner and I'd be a happy man. I'd be a real happy man. I'd just you know dry clean for them all day. So this is your call to action. This is what they teach you in, in, in every advertising thing that you've ever learned. Your call to action. Shop Broadwell Vintage. Get yourself a nice a nice flannel. Look cool this fall. Summer's coming up. 
Maybe get some round, colorful John Lennon glasses or like um, a tie-dye t-shirt or uh, a belt buckle that some Hoosier named, uh, uh, what the heck you name? Earl Sweat. Sweat, but Earl... Earl Sweatbutt used to beat his kids with this belt buckle, and you can wear it around proudly and say, I got it at Broad Ripple Vintage. That's why I look so cool. Shop Broad Ripple Vintage in their fair prices. And uh, remember, the time to hesitate is through. Salutations, and thank you for listening to the Jack Lagoon Podcast. This show's so cool to me. Because it, it it can take any shape that it wants. I can do anything I want with it. You know, it's not like a school project that I have to display that I know how to transition. And uh, I can do different vocals and can insert different audio tracks from YouTube or, or whatever. I can do whatever the hell I want. I can even swear. Cock, shit, piss. I can do whatever I want with these monologues. In fact... I could say cock shit piss for nine minutes and then head right into this interview with uh, Steve and his newborn baby. But I don't want to do that. I want to check in, kind of. Uh, I want to see, I want to, I want to tell everybody that I really do appreciate all of the support so far. Um, I get to, one of the things I've set up with my host with my website where I post these is um, it tells me who's been how, how many times these things have been listened to and um, I gotta say it's 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 a lot more than I thought it would be so thank you very much even if you're only listening to part of it it doesn't it doesn't make a difference to me <laughs> it all looks the same so thank you from the very bottom of my heart um, but now the next thing's next the thing is next this is fun for me. I like doing this. This is what I want to do for a long time, I think. But, well, I always thought I would just be doing it for me. I thought that I would talk to people and, um, for me, I'd talk to guys like Brian and just like pick their brain for me and then happen to share them with people because that stuff happens to be interesting. But now that I've got people listening, I want to make them happy and I want to give them what they want rather than just like take, take, take with this. And so these monologues feel very narcissistic. I know I want to do like creativity. I don't want to just plug, um, like I don't want like, I don't want to be replaceable. I mean, obviously Matt Lauer would do this much better than I would, but I don't want to just be some interviewer. Um, I want to be a podcast host. And so I want to know what you guys want me to do with this opening, or I could do it at the end even. Um, but I want some feedback. Like, what do you guys like and what do you guys not like? Do you guys want me to, like, tell you about Max's sleep habits or, like, do, like, college stoner thought of the week or, like, I'm sorry, that what I've written down is college stoner level philosophy. Um, college stoner level philosophy of the week or, like, like uh, c- cool shit I read online, even just, like, regurgitating something that I saw. Even though it's not creative, I mean, it might brighten somebody's day. Um I've got in here pamphlets from the doctor's office that I could read, like, about STDs or ADHD. Um, you know, I could I could do word of the day and make it f- some word I don't know. I could teach. I could, like, it doesn't, I, the, 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 what I could do with this piece is, is literally limitless. And I want to know what people want to hear. Um... And part of that goes with wanting more people to hear. Uh, I always thought that this would be something that I would do for myself. I said that already. Um, but I never thought that... Well, I always thought I'd want to do it for myself. And then pe- the people would come. And the people actually have surprised me with their coming. But they're not... Um, once I get a taste of it, I just, I want more, you know, I want those X amount of views to turn into like XX or XX, X amount of views. And so I want to know how to do that. Um, I'm looking into ways to market this thing. Um, 
But I think the the best way to start, or at least the easiest way for me, is just ask for like retweets and you guys to tell people about this, um, especially with this episode, because Steve, I feel like uh, a lot of people are curious about his situation, and um, I think he'd appreciate everybody hearing this instead of making their own assumptions. So for this shit like it's hot, um, for the next shit like it's hot, tell people if you post links like yourself, that would be so killing. I'd feel like such a celebrity. Um, this also is a several time take. I've done this a couple of times and uh, in one of them I just kind of on the spot said whoever can come up with the most creative way to promote this show, come on the show. We'll talk. We'll talk about whatever you want. You can interview me, and you it can be the the You Lagoon podcast, and um, it can be all about you, but I want help from my friends. You guys are doing great. Just listening. Just listening is awesome, but uh, like a retweet button would be cool, you know? Whatever. I'm asking too much, maybe. On to the interview. I talked with my man, and I do say man um, intentionally. Uh, I graduated high school with him. I carpooled in elementary school with him, and I played football with him for as long as I played football. Uh, he taught me once to play Monopoly, his like backwards fucking way that he made up like late at night, but late at night was 12 because we were 10. And uh, I believe that was the night that the Pacers actually kicked the uh, their fans' asses in like 2004. It might have been, it might have been 2005, late 2004, early 05, something like that. Uh, we had a basketball game the next morning, you know, and that was before I stopped growing six years before everyone else. Um, as I say in this interview, I once made this man pee his pants. Like as a child, not not because he was drunk or anything. He just pissed his pants because I made him laugh so hard. And this man's a father now. I think everybody's dying to talk to him and know how he's doing, know how his baby, know how Grace is doing. And um, so I scored the exclusive interview. Um, Steve's the, the proud father of a healthy baby bro named Hayden. Um, and I went to his parents' place to record this episode. And was like immediately made aware of, of what a loving uh, situation um, that these guys have, have kind of built for um, for both Steve and Grace and also Hayden. Uh, everybody's chipping in and it's it, it was amazing. And I got the impression that it was that same way on Grace's side too. And that this is not only when a baby's born, when I was born I was my mom's responsibility and that was my dad's responsibility and I'm sure my grandparents and aunts and uncles helped out but man I felt like this baby was being raised by six ten people you know he's in great shape he's healthy and he's a farter and he was chill as fuck um grace grace was so calm I mean they were all calm I maybe it was just that they were sedated because they were tired but like Grace was calmer with a baby than I was with my podcast. And Steve's family was so happy to help. And um, I can't tell you not to have doubts for these these two and, and their their baby boy. But, man, I can tell you after I went over there, I have no doubts that that kid's going to grow up and be uh, a man. I mean, he's gonna they're going to raise this kid right. Steve, Grace, Curry family. Um, Grace's family I, I don't know what her stepdad's name is This is going to be an awesome Awesome experience for all of them I think I believe in them wholeheartedly And uh, please enjoy this exclusive interview With one of my oldest friends Stephen Matthias Curry <laughs> Okay, take two. Uh, the first thing I've written down is congrats, obviously. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, 
you know, I thought initially this idea was kind of like, oh my, that would make an excellent podcast is a, a brand new uh, dad. Um, but I didn't want to like, I don't know, take your time or exploit you. Cause I know that it's yeah. like a busy, everything's going on. Um, but then I thought that, I mean, I don't know for sure that people have questions. Yeah. People are making uh, judgments and speculations and stuff. So yeah. this would be a good way for you to like clear the air. Yeah, clear the air, yeah. tell your side, and like do it all at once. Yeah. Um. As well as like, uh, I don't know, I just get it all out at once, right? Yeah. So, take us through that day. Us, like, I hate talking. Like I have an audience of more than four. <laughs> take us through the day. Um, you're, you know, you're, you're sweaty, nervous. Uh, I don't. Are you there? The day he was born. Yeah. Yeah, I was. So, um, you know, you you know, your life's about to change forever, and then on top of all that, uh, you've got a baby passing through your hoo ha. What's it like, Steve? You know. Um, <laughs> When I first found out, I, like, I had just gotten back from Florida, actually. <clears throat> so From Florida? Yeah, I went to go visit my old roommate. Um, found out that she was in labor? No, I found out she was in labor when I was home. But okay. I, like, I got back from Florida, and, like, not even 24 hours later, at, like, 2 in the morning on Saturday, I get a call. And it was her mom, and she was like, you know, um, Grace is going into labor. And I'm just like, what, Grace Matthews? <laughs> like, labor, like, having a baby? And, uh. You know, so I was kind of freaking out, but my main objective was just get to the hospital, like ask questions later, just get to the hospital. Were you in Westfield or? Yeah, I was right here. Okay. I was like sitting in the living room with my sister. We were watching like some vampire movie. I don't know. But I remember oh my that God. I had no gas in the car. So I'm like, I'm asking E for all this gas money and she's just pulling change out of her, like out of her purse. And so I'm just walking out with stacks of quarters trying to get to the gas station. I was like, whatever, I'll get gas later. Um, but as I'm pulling out of the neighborhood, her stepdad, Todd, like drives a Jeep and I knew that, and there was nobody on the road, but this Jeep. So I just pull in behind this Jeep Well, I have a cop car. So he thinks I'm a cop. Right. So he's going slower going to the hospital, but like, I don't know where I'm going. So I'm just following him. So eventually we get to the hospital, whatever. And, um, when we both get out of the car, we're looking around, like trying to figure out where to get in first of all. And one of the doors is locked that we needed to get in the maternity side and so we go in through the main entrance and this girl has to like open all of the doors for us manually so we're running through the hospital just running down these empty hallways and we get to this one door where we have to call somebody to open the door is this the hospital yeah. over like on meridian this is riverview that's noblesville oh okay yeah cool and um so we finally get somebody to open the door you know and when i get in there they're just now pulling Grace out of this room uh, to go get her C-section because she was just so far dilated already that they couldn't do or couldn't, like, go through with it. So they just had to take her into surgery. Is that – no, I don't really know. Is that, like, a wake – is that an awake surgery? Is that a what? Do they knock her out for that? Oh, yeah, they, they put her down with anesthesia. Yeah. But she likes surgery, so she you know she, she likes surgery. She loves surgery, so <laughs> she took it easily. She was down and like they tell her to count backwards from a hundred. She yeah. got to like ninety three, and then she said she passed. Why don't out. they ever do like fifteen? It sounds like they only get to like ninety six. Yeah, I was gonna say just start counting. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, but uh, but after that, you know, I saw her for like a quick glimpse, and then she before was in surgery. Room. Yeah, and then so she's in surgery, and um. Then we were just waiting in the viewing room, like, viewing the nursery. And then eventually the child came out, and, you know, I got to go back and, like, see her and him. And then they moved him and her to, uh, like, their own room. And then they just started giving us tips and pointers, like, how to breastfeed, how to do this, when he's going to wake up. Like, you need to alcohol swab his umbilical cord every day. And so, yeah. That was – so how long was the surgery? What time is this that you met your son? Uh, my son was born at 3.23 in the morning. Okay. Um, I would say we probably all got settled in the room around like 5 a.m. Um, and they didn't leave the hospital until 
that Monday, but I was gone. I went back to school. Mm-hmm. So I just stayed there, slept there overnight on the weekend. and You slept overnight at the hospital on yeah, the weekend? Her, yeah. And then you went back to school for the week and then now... Then, no, you just come back happened. on. On the weekends? Yeah, so I'll leave like Friday and I won't go back till Monday morning. And she took the semester off? Yeah. Cool. That's That sounds like a good deal. Is she living here now? For Yeah, She well, she's not living at my house. She's living back at her house with her family so but is the baby here well the baby's at her house and then when i come back on the weekends we try to bring him over here. cool so cool okay so how you mentioned that you found out it too as she's in labor when did she know did she know that she was going pregnant to labor? Is she claims she doesn't know yeah but who knows yeah who knows it's not really something i feel like i can Speak uh, for yeah. If you don't, you know. If you don't, you don't. Did any time like? I I feel like if it was me, if if more than one like symptom of pregnancy came yeah. up, I'd be like a, a panicked mess. You know, well, like, did you at at any time like feel like oh she, that she might be pregnant? I, you know, I had, and I actually did tell her to get a pregnancy test at one point, but you know, she told us we were fine. I was cool, and you know, I just I went with it. I was like, okay, you know, that's fine. <laughs> she but, knows, right? Yeah, I mean, what sucks is like I hadn't seen her for two months mm-hmm. and, until like the kid was born. So you know, seeing her in the hospital for the first time was like kind of awkward, right? And like, you know, I didn't get to see like that final progress, like progression. So if she was <laughs> to get a really big stomach, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been there to see it. Did you what? What? Uh, a month ago, what was the? status of your relationship we texted maybe like once or twice a week but yeah. like we had just broken up after a winter break okay so it was yeah that's that's tough timing uh <laughs> it was really bad timing but what kind of symptoms did she have that, that like did she go to the hospital for what did she go to the hospital for um i don't know exactly what she went to the hospital for but I know that she went on the Thursday that I was talking about that I got back from Florida. And um, I I don't know exactly what she went for. I think she just said that she felt sick or something. But mm-hmm. when she went, they told her that she was 13, 14 weeks pregnant. Well, that was a lie because Saturday they told her that she was 36 to 35 weeks. And I'm Whoa. Like, Dang. <laughs> so. How long is, how many weeks is nine months? 40. 40. Yeah. Okay. So, so he was born five weeks early yeah but they said he was wow. perfect like he was fine so nice man uh, i don't know i mean I, i'm asking questions i've got a couple of questions written down but <laughs> there's a baby over there you know what i mean yeah i, I don't know. know i don't know these questions are dumb i mean they're not dumb i'm gonna I'm hopefully touch on them but like I mean, we know how each other. You, you can ask me whatever you want, man. How do you feel? You know, I like... Like you woke up to me. I don't know. It's it's new every day, whether I'm here or like at school, you know? Like, it, it's the first thing I think about. And even though me and Grace aren't together, like, you know, she's she's another like first thing that I think about. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm always hoping that, you know, that they're doing well and like... You know, everything's fine because, like, I don't know. I'm a big believer that everything happens for a reason. So I just know that, like, this is what is meant to be going on in my life. And I would be really devastated if I woke up and, you know, one of them weren't here anymore Mm -hmm. or, like, something happened to my kid. You know, I don't know. My dad kind of said it really well the other day. He was like, now that you have a kid, you'll just look at everything differently. And I totally believe that. I just, I think of everything so much differently now that it's just ridiculous. What do your parents think? You know, everybody, nobody really had time for the, uh, like, the initial shock of, like, oh, she's pregnant, like, we're yeah. gonna have a baby, like, so, everybody was really supportive, you know, on both sides of the family, it was really cool to, like, see everybody come together, um, nobody's really giving us backlash for it or anything, they're just trying to be as helpful as possible. That's and, so cool. Yeah, it's, it's awesome, I'm loving it. That's so cool. Uh, it- um, I, dude, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, what do you say? Like I said, there's stuff here, but I feel like that's very limited to like the situation. But I, I, there's not on here a lot on here about how you feel. You know what I mean? Like when I, I don't know. 
I've been excited to do this for a couple of days. You know what I mean? I don't wake up and think about it, <laughs> but I spend a lot of time in my day thinking about it. And when people ask me like, what's new, I've done like two and a half of these. So that's kind of my answer. I've got a podcast now, but uh, damn dude. When people ask me, what's me, what's me, what's new, what's now? You said, um, that, uh, that you think everything after a reason, this is what's supposed to be happening. And, um, I don't think we've ever kind of like really talked about that. Uh, but it doesn't surprise me knowing you. Um, and actually one of the things I've written down here is like, you've always been a super motivated person. So how do you think that this is going to motivate you to, uh, to do whatever? I, I, I know that this is going to motivate you for something. Yeah. Um, how do you see it really like changing you as a, as a man you know changing me as a person i um well like as a son to my dad i always looked up to him because you know he had kids at a really young age too so how old was he he was like 18 when he had my older sister and then i think he he was 19 when he had me so oh, really yeah he worked two jobs was just like busting his ass to support us and you know, when when I hear stories about all that stuff, I, you know, I really look back and appreciate things like that. So my goal is to do absolutely everything in my power to finish school, get a good job to support him. And like mainly since me and Grace are not together, not have a like dysfunctional family relationship right. to, to the point where it's a power struggle and we're using Hayden as a bargaining chip. Like, I just don't want that to happen. I want to make sure that like he feels loved by all of us and like he's not hearing one thing from mom and one thing from dad you know mm-hmm. like he's being instilled with the same values and that's the biggest thing for me I'd, i mean i don't want to talk all like high and 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 mighty i already i don't know if this was on the first take that i made fun of me saying like tell us but um you know there are people listening so when i came over today uh steve opened the door and his mom was right there did she have did she have a laundry basket in her Am I making that up in my... I don't know. I think she's um, wearing a robe. I went to, to Steve's room to like set up, and they told me not to go in there, and Steve told me that his sisters are sleeping in there, so he and Grace uh, can have their room, and, and I don't... I mean, right away, it does seem like everybody's in. Yeah. Everybody's glad to help. Yeah. That's so cool. You. I don't know... You, you know, it is, it, like, such a family. yeah, I know it is really cool because you would think, you know, the second I figured this out, like initially I'm like, okay, I'm really happy. Like I'm about to be a dad. Secondly, I'm like, okay, initial shock. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Third of all, I'm like, my dad is going to kick my ass. <laughs> like it's over. <laughs> Did this it, happen in an order or is this like a cumulative <laughs> I mean, it was kind of like a all at once. Of feelings. Yeah. yeah. It was like meta emotion. But, how uh, did, how did they handle that? Who, my parents? Yeah. Like, well, I mean. You They've know, been awesome so far, but yeah. initially. I mean, initially, you know, my dad wasn't even here. Everybody mm-hmm. was kind of like just really tripped up on how the fact that she didn't know she was pregnant mm-hmm. to begin with. But, you know, it all settled down. We got a paternity test. Like, it came back positive. I I had no doubt that I wasn't the father. Like, so, no, but everybody, everybody jumped in. It was really great, you know. Even even when I was telling my sisters that their aunts, they were they were all happy and giddy. You know? <laughs> I think everybody's just happy because it's a baby, and you yeah. can't be ha- like not happy around a yeah. baby. So, yeah, yeah. I feel like you guys maybe skipped. You probably skipped a lot of important stuff with not knowing lots of planning stuff, but you also skipped a lot of. It sounds to me like you guys went straight to being happy and excited instead of scared and nervous and and like reading book after book yeah do those, do those books even say anything different you know i'm not even I, they I all say the same thing <laughs> i haven't even read any of yeah. them so and i don't plan on it but you, you know like you can't skip that or you 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 kind of have to skip the being sad and like disappointed step almost you know if, if you go into it with any negativity or like doubt in yourself going into it at any time or when it's happening at all with, yeah you know with doubt that you're doing the wrong thing or you know like you made a mistake then i feel like down the road it's going to cost you and you just have to be very optimistic about it so yeah 
Are you gonna? You're not gonna keep the football going. You know that's that's really up in there. I'm actually about to decide that in a few days. You know, I'm yeah. about to sit down and have a conversation with my dad about it. I've already talked to a few of my uncles and my grandpa, but you know, if it's if it's just something that either one is not best for the kid, I'm not doing it, or two, if I'm gonna go out there every day and not have a hundred percent and like want to go out there and do my best every day if i'm just sitting there thinking about the kid at practice all day then i don't want to do it because i feel like that's a waste of my time right and theirs well why would that be i mean not that i don't know you, it, when you put other people into like your decision I, why would that be best for him I'm not not saying it would be bad for him yeah. but what would, why would he the only reason i think it would be best for him is because be best for him versus be worst for him be, you know what I mean? I don't think I don't feel like he'd gain anything, but I think. Yeah. Do you mean like you need him to gain something? I know. I or you want like, him to not lose something? I just well, I don't want him to lose time. Like, right. I don't want okay. Him to lose my time, but I mean, there's nothing he really gains from me playing football except right. for the fact that I mean, maybe some more values can be instilled for me, or like I can be more disciplined. I guess I'm sure everybody could mm-hmm. like improve on that, but I, you know, if I can use that time to spend here. Then I'd love to do that because my goal is to, you know, stay at school at Wittenberg, but try to schedule all my classes on on like two days. So all I all I have to do is go down there for class, and I can come back. And How like long of a drive a is that? It's like two and a half hours. Okay. You know, it's not that bad, but it's worth it. Why are you thinking about transferring at all? You know, I have thought about it, um, and that's that's honestly like another big uh, option for me, but. In my mind, it's like if I go to school in Indiana, it's still going to be about an hour away, you know. Mm-hmm. So, like, what's the extra hour? <laughs> well, especially if it's a good. Education. I don't know. What about IUPUI? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did, I did a semester at Ivy Tech. IUPUI is not hardly any further, I don't think. But I thought it was. I had a good time. Yeah, I was gonna say. Or, I mean, or I could just take online class. Online class, stuff, yeah. You know, it's it's like the world is my oyster. Like I can do anything, I guess. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Why um why why Wittenberg? Why Wittenberg now? Like or now, or yeah, like, yeah. You know? Um like why stay? Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't I, like I don't really have an option, you know, like I have to graduate at some point, so since I'm already here, I might as well just at least finish off this semester. Oh, you totally finish yeah, the year. You know, yeah. I mean you gotta like I'm halfway done after the semester, so then I guess I can really gauge on whether or not I feel like I can go back, or mm-hmm. if I feel like I should move closer, or go to online school, or you know. But just finishing off at least this semester until the summer, yeah, is what is that, what's gonna hold me off. Yeah, I, I wouldn't make any case for anything else. I don't think. Could you do um, one day? Do they offer a lot of online classes at Wittenberg? Um, I, I know they do in the summer, but I don't think they do during the actual school year. Yeah. So. That sucks. Uh, uh, and then this is, actually, you know what, I don't, never mind. <laughs> I don't edit this, so I won't. I was going to say, and then this was a time that I would edit out, but I, I'm not. <laughs> um, God, these are, I asked, like, my parents for questions, and they're great. They have questions, but they are <laughs> they're great people, but they are not great questions. <laughs> so, um, Steve, how is it how has this changed you? How has this changed <laughs> me? I mean, you know, like I said earlier. Not he's uh, out fast. Like, uh I um it really gives me a different perspective on a lot of things. And um you know, I feel like it honestly makes me stronger. Like I played a lot of sports in my life, you know, mm-hmm. I've been through a lot of turmoil through high school you know as you know but um <laughs> there's a lot of adversity yeah that's what i'm saying the football but team. Th- this is the longest set of adversity i will have in my life like raising a child oh, totally this isn't something that's gonna like be with me for a year or two it's, yeah it's gonna be like a lifetime and it's gonna be a challenge and it's gonna be fun to raise them and i'm really excited so have you guys talked about um i don't know if you guys aren't gonna pl- aren't planning on being together do you think that you're gonna have to like coordinate a lot of uh, do you feel like you have to stay here now do you feel like you have to if you're gonna go anywhere you have to go together um have you talked about that we have a little bit um i don't feel like i have to stay i feel like i should stay Mm -hmm. i feel like and and i told her that 
especially in the first year or two that you know if it's going to come to some holiday or something like that like oh we want to go here for halloween or we want to go here for christmas then like and it's and it's my family then I want her to come you know and I want her family to come and I'm and I'm not going to tell them that they can't come and if she has something on her side of the family that you know they want to take them to then I would hope that she would want me to come right you know it's just one of those things but um like I said I really want both of the families to merge and I don't want that to become a problem yeah. so especially through the holidays like that's going to be what a big you mean. deal yeah is she now I didn't realize she'd be here um do you think she'd want to come on later I mean yeah, maybe not now necessarily she might she might be busy. I'm sure she would love to. She'd be yeah. Busy. She's got uh, some, some stuff to, to tell some people. Uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure she's, she can give you behind the scenes at the hospital. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, some, some things that maybe you did learn with football. You mentioned football. Yeah. Teaching you values and, and, and also, uh, like having to rebound from from tough times and like like I mean we were constantly constantly like something sucks yeah <laughs> but we have to come out there and do our best anyway uh what well, what are some things that you've noticed maybe uh like past Westfield some things that maybe I didn't pick up on or at, at Wittenberg or, or even at Westfield that you think are really coming into play now um you know, obviously the biggest thing has got to be facing adversity. And I feel like we were preached that in high school, drilled in our head. So, you know, when something goes bad, you got to react. And I feel like I, I had to pounce on this almost as if it were an opportunity to me, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I have to take full advantage of what's in front of me. And um, and I hope that I can do that with this kid. Um, I guess another thing would be discipline. Just, you know, making a plan and sticking to it and gone for full force without any hesitation so um see that's something i feel like i i, I don't somehow I, I learned a lot i think but somehow i got out of discipline i'm so not disciplined anymore <laughs> i don't know i feel like i kind of learned that not even through football but just like well my roommate dropped out um so this whole second semester, I've kind of been been on my own, like doing mm -hmm. whatever. So I haven't really had somebody that that has my back, you know. I, I've I've had to figure out everything by myself. So I really kind of instilled that in myself before I even knew about Hayden or any of this. Um, like yeah, I wake up really early. <laughs> we and, mentioned your your son's name yet? Oh yeah, Hayden Earl Curry. Who came up with that? Where's the name come from? Um, Earl was actually a family name on both of our sides Ooh. yeah her grandpa and my great grandpa so that was that was sticking and then you know we were just looking through like some baby boys named yeah. directory and we came upon hayden parker and maverick and we decided to go with hayden i think maverick could have been a mistake that's how i feel <laughs> you know, i brought it up originally <laughs> as a joke for top gun but she hadn't seen the movie so that killed it um did uh, did you guys feel like you had to get a name now? No, you know it wasn't really it wasn't rushed or anything. We just we were like, yeah, you know, we should we should probably come up with a yeah. name at some point. So, spot, yeah, fluffy. We <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's nuts. How's it been since? You said he's three weeks old now. Yeah, he's two weeks it's, old. What's today? The third, April third. Um, not sure, I believe so. Why why count back three weeks from April third? What what day was he born? <laughs> He was born on Pi Day. Nice. So that's going to be, what, is he going to get, like, pie for, like, birthday pie and that cake? Yeah, that's what we joked. Hopefully a mathematician. Yeah. Oh, if he's anything like you, he he's, wouldn't No, be. he's not going to be <laughs> anything like my dad. He will be. Um, Actually, that's cool you brought that up. When I was asking my parents what some things we should talk about were, he said, he said just ask him what his dad does. Because his dad's got a super interesting job, I guess. Yeah. And then Max mentioned how this is one of Max's favorite stories. I swear to God, he tells it all the time. He's catering this event at the Indy Five Hundred, oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's got this. He already dropped this uh, tray tray of champagne, um, like several glasses. And so this is like fifteen minutes later, maybe he's holding this tray, and then your dad comes up 
says, hey, kid, how are you doing? And, like, throws his hand on Max's shoulder, and he drops his whole tray again. <laughs> but any event that would lead him to be catering a, a – or not at, at a catered uh, Indy 500 event, that's pretty – I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty – I mean, he uh, – He had a sweet, like, race car when we were little. <laughs> Well, he uh, just recently won the uh, Indy 500 with Tony Kanaan. I what? Think it was like two years ago. What does he do? He's a he's an engineer, so he basically like comes up with the pit strategies and stuff like That's that. That's so cool. Yeah. So, so is he cool. like the the lead man in the pit or like the head engineer? Okay. Yeah, he just stands. He doesn't really do much. He's kind of a lazy ass. He just, he just kind of bosses people around. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> no, nah, he's no, he's not like a dick or anything though. No. Yeah. I mean. He's not. I'm. You know. I know him. He's yeah. not a dick. I remember uh, when we were actually eighth grade football, and I don't remember. I don't remember what it was exactly. You got the defensive player of the year. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. In the middle school cafeteria. What about it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry>. And <laughs> um, I was trying to figure I, out how no, it correlated well, to my dad. Well, yeah. No, I remember <laughs> you being super, uh, like. I don't remember if he was proud or you were proud for like to present him with that. Mm-hmm. But I remember like like realizing right then like how much he meant to you, how much you wanted to impress him and I wonder I was I mean I was kind of thinking maybe how much of that you feel now as the roles have changed as a father. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean you know, it's it's weird playing both sides now, like the son and the dad, mm-hmm. because because you're still young. You're not. Yeah, a, you know, you're a kid still. Like I still want to be my dad, you know. Right. So like right now, I'm trying to be, I don't know. And I've had people tell me when I'm taking care of Hayden that they remind, like I remind them so much of my dad, and I think that's funny because that's exactly who I want to be. But um, you know, I just I feel like it's too early to tell because, like you said, when I when I handed my dad that award you know, you could just, like, do you remember that? Am I pulling this out of my ass? Yeah. But I feel like I do that all the time. You yeah. Know? Like I just want him to be proud of me no matter what. Right. You know, I'll, I'll be at a game and I just look up in the stands and hope <laughs> that I see him or something. But you know, I, I, I don't want Hayden to feel pressure on me. I just want him to know that I'm there and that I like, I want him to do the best and I want what's best for him. So if he wants to come up, you know, and share this award with me and he thinks it's really great, then you know what? I think it's really great. Yeah. No matter what it is, whether it's ballet, hockey, basket weaving, basket weaving, whatever. you know, I always hear people talk like that's always the, the, the when you're making a list, that one always goes on there to like anything. Underwater do you have any weaving. idea what it is? <laughs> what do you mean? Do you no, have, I've I never don't. seen it. I've never like heard about it other than people mentioning it as a yeah. joke. Should, uh, should be an Olympic sport. It isn't. I thought it was. It should be by now. If it isn't, I. <laughs> you know what? I was thinking about that recently too. I, I just because it's in the Olympics doesn't make it a sport. What? I mean, <laughs> it's like <laughs> that, there are things that require athleticism or coordination or body control, but I feel like there are more deserving sports that aren't in the Olympics than like the luge. Like what? Uh, oh, football, for example, but I, I guess that's not as global. Um, it kind of blows my mind almost, but like I guess we have a different perspective sitting in America. So yeah, right. I don't know. Well, I think part of this... Man, how did this thought come up? How is it related to pro wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> I think I was thinking that they are, even though it's fake, uh, they're crazy athletic and what they do is kind of similar to like like contact figure skating you know what i mean yeah. it's kind of like a it's not choreographed but there is sort of a like a dance to it so what i'm getting is we should have wrestling pro wrestling ice Olympics. Skating. yeah no i mean no. <laughs> i just felt like they were as good as athletes if not better than than figure i don't know anything about figure skating so <laughs> i don't know man but i can't skate to save my ass so yeah i'm not even gonna dog on them yeah i don't know that's kind of a jumbled thought i wish that was <laughs> i sound like a crazy person now it's okay you know I it's would my say, podcast fuck it <laughs> i want to say curling isn't that most like athletic but right it takes a crap little technique let me tell you right yeah that's ridiculous no i mean there's i mean 
tons of things. Like, like that's how I feel golf is, but or like ping pong. Yeah, <laughs> is ping pong in the Olympics? No, it's on the Mar- I mean, it could Mar- be. Mario Sonic Wii Olympics. I mean, it's on there. <laughs> Do you know if uh, like badminton is? I don't actually. I don't think so. One afternoon, um, Ferrer and I played a game of badminton to a hundred. Jeez. It went on for hours. It was awesome. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, he's home right now, too. Oh, yeah. It's weird. Every t- I feel like every time we come home, he's home, too. Um, All right. I feel like now's probably a good time for a commercial of sorts, whatever that might might be later. Um, And then we'll come back maybe with with Grace or something and, mm-hmm. and uh, pick it up from here. Sorry. Cool. The Jack Lagoon. Brought to you by Hayden. Uh, it sounds like Hayden's got something to say, so uh, we'll let him let him speak here. He shut up. <laughs> yep. He had a lot to say. Does. All right, and it's just Stephen Hayden and I. Uh, I don't know if Grace didn't want to or or didn't. She said she might when she comes back. Yeah, you know, I it didn't seem like she was against it. Just yeah. I don't know. Who cares? Um, I don't think the mic's getting that. I, I wanted to listen. I mean. No, getting him. I'm at. It's it's a whole different feel when he's right here at our feet, your feet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't really have much. <laughs> I figure we'll wrap it up. Um, let you let you get busy with your day. Uh, do you have anything you want to say to the the haters? The haters. Do you have anything you want to tell people? Um, These are people you might, you know, maybe haven't talked to in a while or or, or have. Um, you know, not, no, I mean, nothing particular that I really have anything to say to anybody. Yeah. You know, I appreciate all the support from everybody and, um, Anybody that sent me a good luck text or congrats, really appreciate it. And, um, you know, if you ever want to come see my kid, I'd be more than welcome to let you meet him or hold him. All right. Rapid fire time. Uh, is he healthy? He is. Uh, 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 uh <laughs> <laughs> rapid fire. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Is he healthy? Um, uh, uh, <laughs> um, what are you guys planning on? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the mic is probably two feet from Hayden and I think that just picked him up ripping <laughs> ripping bomb. Um No, I I had a list of questions, but I think you hit them all. I think you hit all the questions without you. Like asking. right away, yeah, without asking. So I mean I don't know. I've been I've been through like not a lot of interviews. You've been grilled, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say people have definitely been asking me so I've been on my toes. No, yeah, I think um, not that <laughs> you did a great job. I don't know that it's a hey, great job answering. Qu- I don't know. <laughs> great job, Steve. <laughs> Good job at life. Um, you get a gold star. It seems like you you really got. I don't know how you did it. How you've got this all? F- it seems like you've got it all figured out already. It seems definitely, like definitely not all of it figured out, but I mean, it seems like you're set. Yeah, we do our best. <laughs> you you're not. You're definitely not there, but you like you know what you have to do to get there. Yeah, and you're gonna get it figured out. Um, you've got a real strong head on on those strong shoulders. <laughs> and you're gonna be fine. I really can you shut them up? I'm trying to record a show. <laughs> God, did I? Okay, so he's pooping his pants. <laughs> did you once upon a time, did I make you poop your pants? 
<laughs> you know, probably. I think I, I did. Like I remember this. You want to in your room? Me? No, I mean, I, I know you peed. No, that was definitely no. Wait, was that you or Tyler Staley? That was like. I know. Oh. I got you on two separate occasions. Yeah, One of we them were was in class. class. Yeah, <laughs> you like made me laugh so hard. I just. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a dad now. Yeah. I was there, buddy. You weren't. This isn't some story of. You know, you were wasted or whatever. <laughs> no. You were just 10. <laughs> just laughing at <in> class. <laughs> All right. All right. On that note, I think, I think everything's. Every question I had has been answered. Um, Steve, thank you. And Jesus, man, good luck. Oh, thanks, for, thanks for having me, man. <laughs> okay. I appreciate it. You're welcome. It wasn't until after I left Steve's house that I forgot to have him uh, introduce a song. So I had him call me up and leave a message, and I thought I would play that message for you all now. Uh, so once again, without any further ado, please welcome my man, Mr. Stephen Matthias Curry. Hey, yeah, I out One, two, three, two. My baby don't mess around because she loves me so and this I know but show. Shake it, shake it, baby doll. Shake it, shake it on the floor. 